Hey folks, my guest today is Kyle Lovett. He's a membership site pioneer and CEO and co-founder of Customer Hub, a simple knowledge commerce platform that dramatically reduces the cost and complexity of launching and operating a knowledge business. He's helped thousands of entrepreneurs increase their profits by selling their expertise online over the past 12 years. Kyle, you ready to take us to the top? Absolutely. Thanks for having me. All right. You have to remind me, I thought, wasn't Customer Hub acquired by Infusionsoft or Keep or are you an independent company? Yeah, we are independent now, but it's been quite the journey. We me and my, my brother, who's my business partner, um, we built Customer Hub after leaving Infusionsoft back in the early days of Infusionsoft. We grew the business for a few years and Infusionsoft, now known as Keep, they acquired our business in 2011. And so we were both back at the company for um, five or six years. We ended up leaving, starting another business, and ultimately we acquired Customer Hub back from Keep um, two and a half years ago. So we're independent again, and we're super excited about the future. Okay. Heck of a story here. Let's, let's, <laughs> yeah. let's go to 2019. Um, how did you know there was an opportunity to buy customer hub back out of keep? Yeah. So we made the acquisition in 2018. Um, we had had conversations with them, um, at the time we left the company about it and just the timing wasn't right for them. And so, we started another business, software business called Loyal Stream, and um, we're growing that product along. And they, they knew we were interested. And so when the timing was right for them, they came back and engaged with us in early 2018. And the acquisition occurred in late 2018. And when was this thing a baby? What was year one? Oh, well, we built the product um, and launched it back in 2009. So uh, that software that we purchased back is, you know, is in its golden years at this point. And we actually spent the last year and a half building a new platform to replace the older technology. And we launched that early this year. And so we're off and running with the, the new platform. We've got a bunch of our classic customers migrating over and we're, uh, we're sort of expanding our market reach to step outside of the key ecosystem, which is where we've predominantly been for the past 10 years. Do you remember how much revenue you did in that first year, 2009? Oh, it was, it was minuscule. We were, we were, you know, we were predominantly doing consulting back then and we, we knew we wanted to build software. And so, I mean, heck, we probably would have been lucky to, to do uh, $10,000 that first year we launched it. It was, it was just mini, mini, how much total uh, consulting you know, revenue did you generate in the early years to plow back into the software building? Just enough to pay the bills. That was our goal was let's, let's pay the bills with some consulting and some services. What that was that though? Do. Like what it cost you to build the software MVP you think back in the day? Oh, uh, it, it was six months. And so, and we actually didn't even know what we were building. To be honest with you, we built a little utility product for keep users to be able to have their customers log in and manage their billing information and make payments for outstanding invoices. Kind of like how you log into like a credit card account or a bank online and you can um, make payments and such. We built that as a utility app for um, keep customers for their users to be able to log into. And, and then our customers just started asking us for stuff. And, you know, lo and behold, a year or two later, we realized we had built a membership product. So and totally understand how you got those first customers from your consulting business. But let's fast forward all the way to today. How many customers are you serving now today? About 560 right now. Okay. Um, so we're still pretty early. We're pre a million in ARR still, but we're, we're growing. Um, we're accelerating pretty quickly now that we've got the new platform out. And we're starting to get a little bit more aggressive with our marketing outside what was of the Keep ecosystem. What was MRR last month? Uh, we were forty three k last month. Okay, interesting. Got it. So scaling nice. And then, what, do you remember what MRR was when you sold it to Keep back in twenty eleven? Yeah, I think we were we were very early on. So um, we were. I know we were sub. We were sub 20K a month. Um, and, you know, we, we, uh, we, we continue to run the business after the acquisition under the Keep umbrella for a couple of years. And we ended up growing it to around a million and a half in ARR um, before really 
keeps priorities start to shift pretty dramatically and and the product sort of got shelved and didn't get much attention for about five years before we acquired it. Yep. No, that makes sense. Now, had you bootstrapped up to 20 grand a month? Uh, yeah. Before you sold? Yep. Okay. Yep. Still bootstrapped today. Mostly we've, we've done some stuff with some angels and some family and friends. We had to raise some capital to buy the product back. Um, that was more than we had sitting around in the bank. So we did that and we're getting ready to, to do a seed round probably later this year. So we're going to get a little bit more aggressive about our growth. We're going to make how much, some hires. And so how much did you, like how, how much have you raised to date so far, including the money you needed to buy back? Uh, we've raised, uh, about 750 K to okay. date. Um, and so, you know, we had, we had a, in, in buying the product back, part of it was cash. Part of it was, you know, payback over time. And um, Kyle, go deeper actually, there if you can. I mean, people do this all the time. They try and like buy technology back from a company they sold it to, but they never know how to structure it. So like, what was the total deal price and how'd you split it down? Well, um, total deal price, I'm not at liberty to share. But what I can say is that, um, you know, we had a we had a plan that was a, a chunk of cash up front. And then we had a, about a, uh, I think it was about a two, two or three year term um, on monthly payments back to the to 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 keep. And that was Can you share um, percentages like this, what, what percent was chunk up front versus what percent was over the years? I think it was about uh, about 70, 30. 70 so, cash up front, 30 over time. Yeah. No, no, no. The other way around. 30% cash up around. front. Yep. Okay. Yep. And it sounds like if you raise 750 to date, it sounds like like the, the, I guess the total price was somewhere under 750K, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the total cash up front. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Did, did did they make money? In other words, did they buy it from you for cheaper than what you ended up buying it for seven or eight years later? They bought it for us for cheaper, and then obviously, it the product is the product was a cash cow. Um, it still is a cash cow, but it was especially a cash cow back in the day when we sold it to them. And so, you know, the 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 majority of the money that they made wasn't in the increase uh, between what they bought it for and what we bought it for, but in all of the recurring revenues that they were generating through the but product. It, but it's not, it, wasn't, the, it wasn't a ton though, right? I mean, it's 20 grand a month in total MRR and they sold it to you when it was doing less than back to and it was doing less than 40K in MRR. So it's not like it was doing a million a month in revenue, right? Well, it wasn't doing, it, it was, it, it got up to a million and a half in annual recurring revenue uh, while, while Keep had it. So, oh, okay. You know, there was probably a, a five-year stretch of time where it was doing over a million in ARR under the Keep umbrella. Then they put the product on the shelf and a bunch of the users started jumping ship. And so it fizzled out over time before we ended up buying it back. So that was where they, they made their biggest, you know, it was a good deal for them to have purchased the product just strictly from a a revenue and cash flow standpoint. Yeah, but, so it's, it's best um, year would have been like something like maybe 2016, 2017, doing 80, 85 grand a month in revenue, right? Probably, yeah, probably 2015 would be my guess. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yep. so you buy it back, you have to rewrite the whole system. How to take? How much cash did you have to spend to rewrite the whole architecture, get rid of all the technical debt? Well, I mean, a lot of that was just sweat equity equity because my, my, my brother's a software engineer. I have a software design and product management background. And so... You know, we we did a majority of the work ourselves in rewriting software, but you know, it took us over a year. So when you consider the going rate of of software engineering, software design, product managers, and such, uh, you know, we we probably spent between five hundred thousand million dollars to yep. to rebuild the platform. So forty three grand a today in revenue a month, uh, five hundred fifty customers, which means the average pays about a thousand dollars per year. Um, is the company how many people are on the team today? We just have uh, four full time, a couple of contractors, and we have a we have a plan to hire about seven people over the next six months. So how much do you want to raise in this seed that you're thinking about? About a million bucks. And what valuation do you think? Uh, we're shooting for a, a ten million dollar valuation. So uh, we think with with the right growth numbers and stuff, we can get there. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think you have to hit before you can get that valuation in terms of MRR? 
I think if we're around 50K in MRR with, with nice growth numbers, I think we'll be able to get that just based off of, you know, what we're seeing in the industry, which is obviously white hot right now. Mm-hmm. Yep. No, I agree. Okay. So four on the team right now, it's going nice. What about churn? Do these folks stick? Yeah. Our churn is um, sub two and a half right now. So monthly? pretty, yep. Pretty, okay. I mean, it's pretty good considering the, the size of our company. Um, and how are you getting customers? And, you mentioned raising to spend more on marketing. What's it cost you to get a $500, say $80 a month customer? Yeah. So right now um, we're, we're averaging about uh, 50 bucks a month to acquire a customer. So super cheap. A lot of our customers are referrals. What do you mean 50 um, bucks a month? You mean you're spending a bunch on ads and each month is about 50, like the average is 50 bucks to get a customer? Yeah, the average. The what average did you spend to get a last month total on ads? Uh, really ch- less than two grand. Okay. So but you think you can scale that? Yeah, absolutely. We've already started to demonstrate that over the last 30 days. We've, we've about tripled, we've about tripled that ad spend in the last 30 days. And we're seeing lift from that for sure. Very so cool. we know we're going to have to spend more. We think if we can, we can average around 300 bucks to acquire a customer mm-hmm. that's super sustainable for us. And it's and just you and your... It's just, sorry, it's just you and your brother on the cap table hours and fusion soft and keeps still sit on the cap table. They don't sit on the cap table. We're actually free and clear of that deal. Um, and so we're, uh, we, we do have some angels and family and friends that have invested in the business that we've given, you know, that are, that are on the cap table, but how much do you still own? Pretty, pretty small percentages. How much do you still own? Uh, Nate and I own a vast majority of the company still. So, um, you know, we've had, we've had two different, we've had one family and friends round, and then we had a, a customer hub raise round to buy the business back. And, um, together we still own, uh, about 70% of the company. That's great. Um, very cool. And, and again, Nate's your brother, right? Yep. That's great. Very cool. All right. Let's wrap up here. Uh, Kyle with the famous five, number one, favorite book. Uh, right now it's, um, outwitting the devil. Um, I'm a big Napoleon Hill fan. I just recently read that one. Uh, Out, on the recommendation of my, outwitting, outwitting wow. the devil. Number two, it's a, you know, it's leadership principles book, basically. Mm-hmm. Number two, is there, success. is there a CEO or founder you're following or studying? I mean, I'm a big Elon Musk fan just because I think he does cool stuff and I like his sort of brashness and his innovation. Um, he always, he always says what he thinks and he doesn't really apologize about it. That I, so I appreciate some of the things he's doing. Um, smaller scale, just, just friends, a bunch of friends that I'm C, uh, that are CEOs that I'm buddies with. I meant to ask you this earlier, when you sold the company to Infusion Shops in 2011, what was the deal price on that? Um, it was, it was over, um, it was over a million bucks in between a million and 2 million bucks mm-hmm. was, uh, was what we sold it for. We had some consulting revenue, so we had a service business as well. And, um, we were able to, uh, you know, we were able to get some valuation from that part of the business yeah, as well. That's nice. Number four, how many hours of sleep do you get every night? <laughs> well, I've got some little kids. I got two little boys right now and two teenage girls. The little boys are keeping us up. So I'm averaging about six right now, Okay, but to be hitting on all cylinders, I need about seven to eight to really be on my game. So married, I'm working to get out of the hole right now. Married four kids. How old are you, Kyle? Yeah, I'm 43. 43. Take us home. Last question. Something you wish you knew when you were 20. Uh, conflict resolution. How to resolve conflicts effectively. Um, I think if you can, can learn how to communicate effectively, really business, life, it's all about relationships. And in the nature of marriage, in the nature of business, in the nature of life, the only thing that is that you can count on is that conflict will occur. And so having a skill set around how to lead through the conflict and how to resolve conflicts in, in an effective way was something that I was, you know, pretty oblivious to in my, when I was 20. And that's, that's a skill that I've acquired that's served me well. So 
Guys, CustomerHub.com, founded in 2009, grew to $20,000 a month in revenue, sold to Infusionsoft for between $1 and $2 million in 2011. Infusionsoft grew it to over a million dollar run rate in 2015 before they put it on the shelf and started to decline. Then the original founders, Kyle and Nate, bought it back in 2018 after raising about $750,000 to get that deal done. They bought it back, re the software. Now it's doing about $43,000 a month in revenue, about a half million dollar run rate. Uh, they still own about 70% of the business, serving 560 customers. We'll go out and try and do a million raise on a $10 million valuation. Once they break that $600,000 ARR mark, again, still own about 70% of the business. We will see what happens. Kyle, thanks for taking us to the top. Awesome. Thank you, man. One more thing before you go. We have a brand new show every Thursday at 1 p.m. Central. It's called Shark Tank for SaaS. We call it Deal or Bust. One founder comes on, three hungry buyers, they try and do a deal live and the founder shares back-end dashboards, their expenses, their revenue, ARPU, CAC, LTV, you name it, they share it. And the buyers try and make a deal live. It is fun to watch every Thursday, 1 p.m. Central. Additionally, remember these recorded founder interviews go live. We release them here on YouTube every day at 2 p.m. Central. To make sure you don't miss any of that, make sure you click the subscribe button below here on YouTube, the big red button, and then click the little bell notification to make sure you get notifications when we do go live. I wouldn't want you to miss breaking news in the SaaS world, whether it's an acquisition, a big fundraise, a big sale, a big profitability statement, or something else. I don't want you to miss it. Additionally, if you want to take this conversation deeper and further, we have by far the largest private Slack community for B2B SaaS founders. You want to get in there. We've probably talked about your tool if you're running a company or your firm if you're investing. You can go in there and quickly search and see what people are saying. Sign up for that at nathanlacka.com forward slash slack. In the meantime, I'm hanging out with you here on YouTube. I'll be in the comments for the next 30 minutes. Feel free to let me know what you thought about this episode. And if you enjoyed it, click the thumbs up. We get a lot of haters that are mad at how aggressive I am on these shows, but I do it so that we can all learn. We have to counter those people. We got to push them away. Click the thumbs up below to counter them and know that I appreciate your guys' support. All right. I'll be in the comments. See ya.